Next question is from Tyler Mick Nutrition. What are your thoughts on boot camps? I'm a trainer who focuses more on one-on-one -on -one training, but there are other trainers in my own gym who do more hit group training. My concern is that the average person has high stress and performing these high intensity exercises is only exacerbating that. I'm supposed to be taking over some of those classes, but I worry that they are doing more harm than good. Oh, one of the biggest struggles mm. with being a trainer, I'm going to tell you right now, is reconciling your integrity with some of the stuff that you may be asked to do. So like you may be working in a gym that says you need to sell a thousand dollars worth of these supplements every single month, or you may be in a situation where you have 10 people requesting that you teach them in a class setting um, and your integrity tells you that you can't possibly train each person in a class as good as you can if you train them one-on-one. -on -one. So it's a, it's a bit of a struggle, but I'm going to help you out a little bit because I had this challenge myself. I used to own a personal training facility, a wellness facility, and in the early years of it, I would do classes like this and I, I would be in the same position. I would think to myself, man, I got you know 10 or 15 people in this class and it's impossible for me to tailor the entire workout for each individual person. That's personal training. It'll never work in an hour long class. Am I doing the right thing? Well, here's how I reconciled with it. There's two things that I did. One is I really focused more heavily on the programming based around mobility. I think mobility has a, uh, more of a general application for group than hard workouts do. Hard workouts, it's it's you, you might give the wrong person the, the, the wrong workout, whereas with mobility, you're more likely to be able to, to give everybody a positive result. So I would do more of an emphasis on mobility. Here's the second thing. Group training typically is a far lower expense than personal training, right? The average class might cost your, one of your, your people – you know, fifteen or twenty dollars for the class, whereas hiring you as a trainer might cost anywhere between sixty to a hundred dollars an hour. You are re you may be reaching people with a class that you would never reach with one on one. And what it ended up doing for me was it it gave me an opportunity. And this is how I this is how I view marketing for fitness as well. Sometimes I just got to get in front of you. And fine, I'll say the things that you might want to hear, but then when I get you in front of me, now I have an opportunity to help you in the right way. And so many times, I would say at least 70% of the people that took my group classes at some point then hired me one-on-one -on -one and I was able to reach them. And those people I don't think would have reached out to me had I not offered uh, the group class. So that's there's a couple that's, there's a couple ways that you can you I'm can glad work you, with I'm that. glad you said that because um, I know I've been on here before and I've said um, I you know wish group training would die right and I get I I, I, I offend everybody <laughs> every time you repeat that yeah, I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. the group I, X instructor yeah <gasps> I know I have, I definitely offend uh, a lot of people when I say that and I I think Sal you just you made a really good point right now that I think is important that um, that's where I could see this right like this I I ha if I'm gonna do group training for whatever reasons right. Uh, that I have to know that the real intent of that is that, okay, my goal by doing this is to get a, a group of people that would not have signed up and paid $150 an hour with me um, because they don't think they need it and they just want to go to this class with their friend or whatever. But my intention is, you know, it, during this time with them is I, I need to convince them that they need more attention. They need that one-on-one -on -one attention from me. So if you use it with that intent, um, I think that's a great idea, and I and I could say I could see the value in that. But you, just like you uh, compared it to marketing, if you're using marketing tactics just to make money, and that's your your strategy is just to just convince more people to buy, 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 and you don't have pure intentions of trying to get them in to then re-educate them. I feel it's the same way. Mm -hmm. So if you're a trainer and you're like, oh, which is the way my brain worked back when I was doing boot camps is. Oh shit! I could either make 150 an hour, or I can make 400 an hour and have this class of 20 people that I'm charging a quarter of the price. Um, and that was the real initial motivation for me was more money, and it was easier. And the part of me that stopped doing it was that I I felt guilty. I was like, man, I got all these people I'm trafficking through this camp, and I know I'm really not helping them through all these circuit based type of training. Now. I also think there's a, a, a thing that I, I you could teach. Like if I were to go back and let's say I was a trainer again and I, I, I was, you know, needed to make more income and there was this 
people that wanted a, a, a boot camp or a class type of setting of personal training, I 100% would run it almost identical to the Maps Prime Pro webinar that I did a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what I eventually, so those that have been listening to the show for a long time have probably heard this if you're new. This is what I did for all the people that I used to boot camp. So for almost three years now, maybe more now, it's been a quite a while, um, I started to offer this Saturday class for free. And it was only to the people that I took through boot camps over the course of you know four or five years before that. And that was just me and my, dealing with my own guilt, right? Guilt of just closing <laughs> everybody on coming in and doing circuit training and not giving them real value. And so I held this Saturday class and that Prime Pro webinar is literally that class. Like it was just, a, I took all, because most of the people that were attracted to this, these boot camp classes were 40 years old to 65 years old, um, you know, engineers, lawyers, you know, uh, teachers, desk job people, like these were the people that I was attracting in their, you know, 40 plus years old. So chronic pain, poor movement. Yeah, they were out of shape. And so burning calories seemed like it was a good idea. But in reality, the things that were going to improve their life more than anything else was if I could get them greater range of motion in their hips and eliminate their low back pain. If I could get their ankle mobility going so they could sit down into a, a, a complete squat or work on their shoulder mobility so they weren't getting constant like tension headaches. Like these things were the things that I knew were starting to really impact and help all of them. And I could take them through a class setting and, it, and it, I didn't feel like I was doing any harm to the other group. Like, so let's say I'm going through a, a web or I mean, a, um, a mobility class and I'm teaching 90, 90, and I've got somebody who can't do it whatsoever. And then I got somebody on the other end of the spectrum that they can do it easy. I'm not hurting the person that can do it really easy at all. It's still good for them. It's a good practice for them. And the ones that really need it, boy, is it a, a really good practice for them where when I'm teaching in a boot camp class where we have 12 people doing uh, jump tucks or you know power lunges or something, there might be one or two people in the class that's appropriate for. Mm -hmm. And then the other eight to 10 of those people, it's totally not appropriate for. And I'm probably doing more harm than good. That's the part about the classes that I can't stand is inevitably, if you're running circuits, you've got a percentage of people in there it is not good for. Even if there are some people it is good for, where if I take you through a mobility class, it's good for everybody, yeah. no matter what. I mean, that's the biggest thing is the intensity is going to get away from you really quick when you have that much of a diverse uh, crowd to deal with. Uh, and that's why I've always been apprehensive to do group training uh, myself. But, you know, if it definitely go through our prime programs and go through the webinar Adam did and, you know, the one I did even and, and just take elements of that and incorporate it in your group setting immediately if you can and really break it down. Uh, another suggestion I would have since if this is something you are going to be implementing and doing and you have integrity behind it, uh, you know, you can do things like squats and lunges and, and push ups. You just you can slow the tempo way, way, way down. OK, and what that's going to allow for you to do is even if you're if you're in a position where I'm doing a squat, but now I'm holding the bottom position, you can walk around and you can see where all these compensations are happening with, you know, the, your grossest mm -hmm. offenders. And you could just slightly alter and tell them, you know, the cues of like getting their shoulders back and, you know, tightening their core. And, you know, you could point these things out while you have them sort of paused in that position, kind of like what uh, this is the one thing that I do respect about like yogis and, and people people out there that they it's it's really about like the the form and the technique that matters and if you really just emphasize all of that and you're able to slow everybody down and uh, be able to account for people that might need the most help and you spot them out, uh, you know, you can still run a class where you give them a good workout and exercises, but the mobility is is going to be such a high value that they're going to respond to that and, and, and tell you like, wow, this made me feel great. And so I highly suggest that. Well, and that's a good thing to say because I think sometimes trainers are afraid that if they don't train the people the way that they think they're supposed to be trained, they're going to lose clients. Right. Not true. If you do this the right way, you'll actually make more money. More people will show up longer. They'll come more consistently because you're training them appropriately and they'll feel the difference and tell people. One of the biggest misconceptions that we have in fitness is that uh, any movement or activity is better than no movement or activity, right? So I hear this all the time. Well, at least they're moving. Right. That's better than nothing. No, it's not. Yeah. Moving right is better than not moving. Moving wrong sometimes, many times, problems. is worse 
than than not moving. So it's like you either sit on the couch all day long or you get up, move wrong, and hurt yourself. Which one was better? Mm-hmm. Obviously, sitting on the couch and not doing the, the movement at all. So any movement is not better than no movement. The right movement is better than no movement. We need to hammer that into people because, again, we've got this mentality where it's like if I'm sweating and I'm sore and I'm moving – you know, it's still better than nothing, so it's okay. It's not a big deal. No, not true. This is how people hurt themselves. This is how people develop a bad relationship with exercise, burn themselves out, and they're actually worse off than if they had done nothing uh, at all.